Hello and welcome back to Hot Simmer Top. Hope you're all doing well today as we start season eight today off the back of an incredible season, winning the treble last time out, the Swiss Cup, the Swiss Super League and the Europa League, which was magnificent. Today, though, we have a chance to win some more silverware. It's a game that I completely forgot about when we won the Europa League last season. But of course, we've got the Europa Super League coming up against Manchester City, who won the Champions League. Before we get into that game, though, of course, we have plenty of things to talk about. And the first thing I want to talk to you about is the series. Now, I'll put it up on the screen right now. At the very start of this series, we had five objectives, okay? And these were the five objectives. Number one, get grasshoppers back into the Swiss Super League. Number two, rebuild the squad and get them back into the upper echelons of Swiss football, qualifying for European football in the process. Number three, build a team capable of winning the Swiss Super League. And number four, get far in European competitions to build up Switzerland's European coefficient. Well, I'm pretty sure we have ticked off all four of those. Those first four things we've ticked off. Number five is win a Champions League and make the Swiss domestic clubs some of the best in Europe and ideally we make the league the best league in all of Europe as well. Now considering that we've done four out of five of the objectives then really we've only got the Champions League to go and to try and make some of these Swiss clubs some of the best clubs in all of Europe and trying to get the Swiss Super League to number one in all of Europe. Now, some of you who have got some really good memories will remember back in episode one of Hop to a Top, I said that I want to try and do it all within 10 seasons. And I was thinking at the time, you know, we can go to 11, 12, 13 seasons if we need to, if you guys are really enjoying it and things like that. And I know you guys are enjoying it, but there's a few things I want to talk to you about. Number one is your enjoyment. That's the most important thing to me. Are you guys enjoying this series? And I think as it has progressed, the enjoyment has dropped off for some of you because We've done everything domestically, okay, and we're now just playing in European football, and that's the only sort of thing driving the save forward now, European football, not the league, not even the Europa League now, it's just Champions League, and that's obviously putting some people off because obviously I focus on the league as well and things like that, so... Going forward, there's going to be less focus on the league. At the same time, though, we aren't really going to be winning a Champions League this season or next season, for example, in, in season nine even, so... What my thinking is, we are going to go and do the full 10 seasons, but at the end of the 10th season, we're going to call it there for the hop to the top save. I've spoken to some guys on the Patreon, and obviously the people on the Patreon are probably a bit more invested than the regular watcher, for example, because they're part of the Patreon. And a lot of you guys on the Patreon were saying that, yes, we think 10 seasons is probably about time to call it there and we start something new. And, and seeing as those guys were sort of agreeing and thinking that's probably the right thing to do, I think that's probably the best thing to do overall. So, obviously, we've got season 8, season 9, season 10 to go. So, there's three seasons to go. And in those three seasons, we're just going to focus on the Champions League, really, and try and build a squad capable of winning the Champions League. So for some of you out there, I know that's going to be some pretty terrible news, but on the plus side, we have got three more scenes to go and I want you guys to get really involved in the next series. The three seasons to go probably will take us the rest of February sort of time, the rest of February. And then obviously my plan was to do a save with uh, Inter Miami in America in the MLS in their inaugural season. And actually it works out fantastically because the MLS season starts at the very end of February. The winter update for Foot Manager comes out end of February, start of March time. So when that winter update comes out and then Inter Miami will actually have a full team of players that's really updated, we'll then start that Inter Miami save for a season, which is what my plan was originally. And then after that, we've got, a good few months to do whatever we want to do. So in the comment section today, I want you to comment down below what type of save you want to see. Not a specific team. I mean, if you want a team, put a team down there, of course. But I'm thinking, obviously, this was a bit of a build a nation style save. We've done that. Would you just want to see like a pure youth development save? We make no signings. We just develop the youth system and we pick a team sort of based around that. Do you want to see like a bit of a journeyman one? Do you want to see... Another style like this, you know, another building a nation or rescuing or reviving a giant sort of thing. I don't know, something like that. Let me know what type of save you want to see and what you'd be most interested in. And we can sort of go from there because I think this see this series, sorry, after the Inter Miami one, which is what I really want to do. I want to put it out to you guys and see what you guys will enjoy for those final few months of Football Manager 2020. Anyway, back into today's episode. We went on a bit too much there, I think, with what I was saying, but you get the gist of it. In today's episode, it's the first episode of a new season, so we need to talk about transfers. As you can see from the transfers, we have sold £21 million worth of players, but only brought in 600 ks worth of players. More players should be coming in soon, but we have had issues and I'll talk to you about those shortly. The £21 million, well, £16.75 million of that has come from Gautha leaving the club 
to go to a Chinese club. Now, Gautha wasn't going to be getting the game time he wanted. Uh, Alex Guardado, Alexis Guardado's story is better than him. He was playing better, getting more game time, and Gautha was getting a little bit frustrated. And considering that we bought him for £10 million, to nearly double that is pretty impressive, in my opinion. Didn't have the best of scenes last time. Out. I just thought maybe he's not quite the player that we need. So he's been sold on to a team in South Korea, not China, South Korea. Not playing very well there at all, but we've made money off him, which is good. Unfortunately, as well, El Hajj Coley has also left the squad to go to Bristol City for four and a half million pounds. A bit of a shame, but of course, all good things have to come to an end. And to get four and a half million pounds for a, for a player that was a fringe player in the end, not really scoring tons of goals, but got average good rating, you know, good average ratings, but wasn't really the prolific goal scorer that we wanted him to be. I think four and a half million pounds for a team in the championship for him is pretty good. We also lost two big players in Tony Cruz, who retired, and Granit Xhaka, who has gone to Deportivo La Coruña. We offered him a new contract, but he wanted £60,000 per week, and I wasn't prepared to pay that for him, especially when his current ability is now only two and a half stars. It's not the four stars it was when he signed for us. So he's gone to Deportivo La Coruña instead on 56 grand a week. We couldn't afford that and I wouldn't want to pay him that much money either. What that means is there has been a little bit of a hole in the midfield and that has partly been filled by a free transfer on Zhao Sores from Porto. He is a box-to-box -box midfielder with only two and a half star current ability, but four star potential, 20 years old. He will get better. He will improve and I think he'll be a great addition to the squad. So welcome Zhao. Thank you for coming. We've also signed Adolfo Indragoli, but he isn't going to be featuring in the first team anytime soon. He's more of a youth player to bolster the under-18 squad a little bit. Nothing really special about him, I'm afraid. Uh, he just was maybe a sign that could be good in the future. So we've got him for the youth team. So don't think about that one too much. Of course, your boy Felipe Cruz is back at the club. He is a obviously back at the club. Nothing to say about there. You know how good he is. There's Felipe Cruz. We've then also managed to get in on loan. You sell at cash from uh, Zebre or Juventus, obviously, in game. Uh, he's a left back, a backup left back. Don't expect to see him much at all, but he was the sort of the backup player for Guardado should he get injured or suspended, which is probably quite likely, actually. But the big signing so far this summer in on loan in the centre of midfield is Xavi Simmons from PSG. In real life, I think he's like a 16-year-old kid who's actually meant to be really, really good foot manager. Maybe not rating him that highly, but he comes in to play in that midfield Build or in that CDM position should we want to use it and looks like a cracking player specifically with his physicals and mental ability he looked great so I think he's a great addition to the squad this season as you can see not many permanent signings and that's part of the issue really we're working hard still to make some permanent signings before the transfer window closes but after we sold Gareth and Coley we had 20 23 24 million pounds to spend on players which isn't a huge amount of money and the quality of players that we want to be bringing into the squad, we have to spend more than that on them. And we also, we have to spend more on wages as well. And we just don't quite have all the funds together right now. We do have quite a bit of money in the bank, but the board aren't willing to give me any more transfer budget. So I'm trying to get players with this budget. The issue is we can't sign players with this budget at the moment because the players that we want who are good enough to come in to actually improve the squad are valued higher than that. And so it's a bit of a difficult situation. I'm working on it still. Transfer window's not finished yet, but that's kind of where we're sitting right now. So whilst there haven't been a whole host of players coming into the squad, which is a little bit frustrating, we have won the opening four fixtures of the season before we get to this Super Cup against Man City. So a 4-1 win over Luzerne with new signing Jao Soares scoring in the first minute of the game. What a way to introduce yourself to the new fans. Uh, Smith and Bottles also picked up goals. Bottles and Soares picked up goals in a 2-1 or 2-0 victory over Lausanne before we won two games in a row 2-1 with Jordan Platt and Javi Simmons scoring against Basel and Bottles with a brace against Lugano. Whilst I think about it actually, Bottles has got himself a new contract at the club on £60,000 per week. He's definitely worth £6,000 per week whereas Granite Jacket isn't. Obviously clubs were sniffing around looking for him again but Bottles has paid back all the debts that we've paid him. I don't know what I'm saying that for. Either way, he signed a new contract, which is fantastic stuff. Uh, Alex Smith has also got a new contract on £31,000 a week because we value him as a player a lot. And if we can find him, Randy Schneider has also been given a new contract because he was asking for one as well. He's on £35,000 per week. So three new contracts to three key players. Anyway, getting into today's game, this 
is the lineup. Kalas stays in goal despite having bids of up to £30 million for him over summer. He is staying at the club because I think he's a quality player and I want to keep him there. Felipe Cruz starts at right back with Sterigu and Haroldinho Bunce making the back line for now with Guardado at left back. That back line I am very confident in. Like I don't think we need to massively improve the defence. I'm desperately trying to get players in for the centre midfield position because I think we need one or two more players there. But at the moment, Schneider and Simmons lock those positions out. Bernard, I think, is potentially the weak link in the squad because he is now 20... Oh, I say... <laughs> He's 21 years old still, so actually that's pretty young still. Four-star potential, but he's just not quite getting there as to how I want him to get there. So I think we need to try and sign someone else on that left wing. Bids for Bernard have come in over summer, but have been rejecting them because we haven't got a replacement for him or a, a, a better replacement for him yet. Of course, we've got players like Tim Wright who can play on that left-hand side, but unfortunately, they're just not quite up to the standard yet. Uh, Alex has, of course, new contract. Uh, Capitanio will improve as well. He's only, what, 18 years old, as is Billy Schmitz. They're both going to get better. Capitano's three-star. Uh, I think uh, Billy Schmitz is two and a half star, still two star now apparently, but he'll get back up there very quickly. So I'm very happy with those two on that right-hand side. And of course, Bottles, you can't get much better than him. So we're happy with him. So it's sort of just midfield and left wing that I'm trying to improve at the moment for this next season. So kickoff is upon us here today. Beating Arsenal was one thing, but beating Man City, well, that's probably another thing. I don't think we're going to be beating... Man City today as they have got Kylian Mbappe on their team, their number nine, which is pretty impressive. Bottles has been put forward early on though and hits the post. That was a decent little move, I've got to say, although it did say a free kick's been awarded for offside, so Bottles was offside in the end. It's a really, really top quality Man City side, I've got to say. They are looking very, very good there, but they've only had one shot in 10 minutes or so, which is... I suppose, a testament to how good our defence is. Haroldinho Bunce gets it into Randy Schneider, who puts it up towards Bottles in behind the defence. Edison, though, makes a good save there. So it would be pretty impressive to win some silverware very early on in this season. That would give the boys a bit of a boost. And if we can beat Man City, or give them a good game at least, that bodes well for how we might perform this season in the Champions League. Of course, we crashed out of the group stages, finishing third, but in the end, that proved to be very good news for us as we went on to win the Europa League in fantastic style over Arsenal. I still can't believe we sort of played Arsenal off the park. They had more shots and things like that. They had better stats, but we didn't see any highlights for Arsenal. We just seemed to keep them at bay, limit them to distant shots. I think quite a lot as Capitano puts it in towards Bottles. Bottles, another attempt, and this time he does put it in the back of the net. His fifth goal of the season already, and we have taken the lead against Man City, and we're actually beating them off the park, I've got to say. We'll skip the highlight because I'm not too fussed. We've had three shots there, two shots. We're playing better than Man City right now. I mean, obviously, I'm basing that off shots, which is... You've got to base it off more than that. But I'm basing it directly off shots. We're doing better than Man City right now. As Sterling puts the ball into Leroy Sané, who puts it over the bar. If we can just sort of keep how we're playing right now... I mean, we are an attacking. Someone mentioned uh, in the comments on the cup final against Arsenal. He said, why are you on attacking against Arsenal? You need to be, like, defensive or cautious... We won the game 2-0. I don't see why we had to be anything other than attacking. And we're going to stick for attacking against Man City today because it's working right now. Felipe Cruz into the middle, collected by Edison. He clears it out towards Mbappe, who's racing forward down the middle of the pitch. And, I mean, to be fair, just skips past all our defenders. But Klaas makes a really good save. I've got to say, this this Man City side is stacked with wonder kids. Obviously, Mbappe, but they've got Noah Kenner at the back, who I think plays for Leeds United in real life, but he's a wonder kid. Uh, they still have really good players like, like uh, Bernardo Silva. Uh, is that Florentino, Luis Florentino, whatever he's called, from, I think it is from, uh, is it Ben Fikri? He, play, he plays in Portugal either way. They have just a stacked squad, Man City, full of wonder kids in the game and things like that. So they should be thrashing us. But Bottles makes it 2-0 on the half-hour mark. What a first half we're having. Are we about to go and win the Swiss Super League? The Swiss Super League, we've, we've won that several times. I mean, the European... I don't know why I said Swiss Super League. It's European Super Cup. I don't know how I've got that so mixed up. But what a finish from Bottles this one is, by the way. That's cracking. And as we approach half-time, Bottles has got a free kick. Can he make it a hat-trick from this free kick? He actually does. We're 3-0 up against Man City at half-time. Against their full-strength side. It must be a full-strength side because they are putting out... Well, they've got Mbappe up front. They've got Edison. And it must be a full-strength side. And yet we are beating them 3-0. And bottles of the hat-trick. You love to see it. You know, I know we've got 45 minutes still to play. But I'm already 
figuring out where to place my European Super Cup trophy because I, I can't see us losing this now. Genuinely cannot see us losing this right now as Mbappe races forward, putting it wide. You're not scoring goals like that, mate. What a performance from the boys. What a huge performance as Man City's corner is cleared only as far as Mbappe, though. He somehow isn't in the middle for the corner, which I find a little bit odd as John Stones plays it back towards Noah Kenner. Kenner into Florentino. Sterling on the ball on the byline pretty much, but Felipe Cruz deals with that one. Out to Capitano, who can get the ball cleared. Out to Sterigu. Great pass there. Up towards Bottles, who doesn't win it. And Man City win back possession. Although Randy Schneider gets to tackle him. That goes as far as uh, Florento. Uh, in towards the middle. Hogan on the ball. Florentino, sorry. Had it a second ago. Bernardo into... How have they not scored there? How have they not scored there, Man City? It's our day. We're 3-0 up. We've got half an hour left to go in today's game. Billy Schmitz, you're going to swap with Capitania because I'm trying to give both of them a decent amount of game time this season to develop them both. Xavi Simmons and Jerome Bernard haven't played brilliantly. They're only players not above a 7 rating. So we're going to take both of them off. Xavi Simmons coming off and Zhao Soros can come on the pitch instead. And then we'll bring Tim Wright on for Jerome Bernard. Go on, lads. Show me what you can do for the next half hour or so. I am genuinely so surprised at how well we have played today. This is absolutely phenomenal. Passing it over the defender. We've got so much confidence in this side as Bottles has been put forward once again. Can he make it four? Nearly could have on the second chance there. Plays it in towards Billy Schmitz into the middle. Cleared by Stones. That was a great opportunity for us. And if we weren't 3-0 up, I would have been slating us. But we're 3-0 up. We're playing with such confidence. We're beating the champions of Europe, the proper champions of Europe. Although saying that, we've beaten them. So we are the champions of all of Europe in my eyes. If you win the Super Cup, you're the best team in Europe. That's what I'm going to try and go off now. That's what I'm going to try and insist on. So in my opinion, Grasshoppers are the best team in Europe as it stands right now. I mean, it's not quite factual, but we'll, I'm going for it. So Kalas on the ball, plays out to one of the best centre-backs in Europe, Haldini Bunce. Into Soros, one of the best centre midfielders in Europe. Into... Oh, battles, battles, bottles who puts it just wide. The best striker in all of Europe, possibly the world. What a player he's turned out to be. And I can't believe we managed to hold on to him for so long. And he asked us for a new contract. Didn't offer him a new contract saying, please stay at the club. He wanted a new contract because he wants to stay at Grasshoppers, which is fantastic as Man City is still trying to find a way forward. Mbappe still putting the ball wide of the mark. You love to see it. Mbappe on a 5.9 rating. How much is he worth? £95 million, £450,000 per week, and he's on a 5.9 rating against Grasshoppers. I don't think we've had much worse ratings in the opposition side. It's a mental, really, as they do pull one back through Rayan Cherky, who is also a wonder kid. Another wonder kid um, coming through there, scoring a goal. His first of a season. Obviously, with only seven minutes to go, I'm not too worried about it. I don't think Man City are going to come back and score another three goals, especially with only two minutes left on the clock now as John Stones puts that over the bar. Surely, that's it. We are the champions of the European Super Cup. You love to see it. The whistle blows. I forgot to turn it back on to 3D highlights so we can see the trophy being lifted, but we've seen enough trophies lifted over the past couple episodes, and this is just another one to add to the locker. What a performance. So Bottles' first half hat-trick was more than enough to secure the trophy for us. It's not really a massive trophy to win, but I'm taking it. I'm going to class it as a massive trophy right now. We've also been given nearly £4 million for that win as well, which is fantastic. And I've got to say, that bodes extremely well for the Champions League. Because if we can beat the winners of the Champions League so convincingly, surely, surely that is putting us as a candidate for winning the Champions League this season. Now, speaking of the Champions League, the group stage draw is on the 27th of August, just after the Zurich game, just before the St. Garland game. What I think we do then is we go and we do the draw. I'll play St. Garland off camera because usually in between the, that game and the first Champions League game, there is a Swiss Cup game, providing we get through the first round. Uh, if we look back to previous seasons, you can see there, like, we usually have the, the draw before the Basel game, then we have the Basel game, then the Cup game, and then that game, and we, we sort of mess around a little bit. What I'm going to do next time out then is do the draw, play St. Garland and a Cup game off camera, providing we get through for the second round, and then we'll finish off the episode by doing the actual group stage game and then playing young boys as well for a bit of some league action which I think will be quite good so thank you ever so much for watching today's episode let me know in the comment section of course what type of save you want to see 
sort of the next sort of challenge is going to be in the, in the next few months or so. Let me know what you think and what you kind of want to see from the channel. What series would you be most interested in watching, essentially? Of course, as per usual, drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And I'll see you next time. For some more hot to the top, have a great one. Goodbye.